Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the Sweetheart Hoya, these cutie patooties here, and how you can best grow her in your home. If you're a plant lover, you're going to want to get your hands on one of these babies. And today we're going to go over plant characteristics and plant care. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow! The Sweetheart Hoya is a tropical succulent vine native to Southeast Asia, and she goes by the botanical name Hoya carii. She's so charming. She is epiphytic in nature, meaning that she wants to attach to a tree or a palm and grow up and off of them. As you can see here in her hanging basket, she's already starting to grow up. And one of her arms is wrapped around one of our grow lights over here. And that's, that's totally part of this plant's growth characteristics. Don't get me started on the Hoya curtisii or the abovada because the abovada back here is already grown up through our curtisii and up to the, to, the, to the air vent. Love Hoyas, as you know from some of the videos we've done on our channel. But differences, if I'm going to speak to that real quick, this is a slow grower and the curtisii back here is a quick grower and the abovada, if you put her in the right location, she'll take off. We've got two, we, we, did a, we rooted a cutting from mom over here and now we have one growing all over our fiddle leaf. But these are really, really cool houseplants. So we highly recommend you get your hand on one of them. You'll often see them in plant shops around Valentine's Day and they'll, they'll sell them sometimes just with the leaf. And if you know from our plant care videos, in the background we have these variegated hoyas that are there and those were just propagated by the leaf and those are just going to stay like that. They don't tend to grow into a vine type if you're going into propagating. And we'll, we'll do a video down the road about how to propagate this plant. But I just want to tell you that this is such a cool house plant. I absolutely love it. The leaves are a dusty, deep green color and can get to about four inches, and the stems are sturdy and vine-like. So she makes for a really cool structural house plant. Our sweetheart Hoya here was gifted to us by a great friend of mine, John Farrar, who I met back in my college days at University of Florida in the Landscape Architecture Program. And John gave this to us a while back, and so I really want to thank him because these are not that common, especially if you're trying to Get your hands on them around Valentine's Day. But John's great. He got us. He got us one, and this one's been taking off ever since he gave it gave her to us. And we've got a whole bunch of roots here that we're gonna probably do a propagation video on because she's really starting to like where she's she's growing. And the, another really cool feature about this plant is that she she will flower for you. Now it's not always gonna happen. She tends to want to do it more in the summer months. And but she has these beautiful beautiful flowers that grow off a of peduncle. And we have four peduncles here, so we're hoping this summer that we're going to get some flowers from her. And we'll come up close so you can see these peduncles. Flowers are just spectacular. They're, they're white with these red centers and star-shaped clusters. Ah, such a pretty plant. It has a wonderful fragrance. The flowers are just so pretty. All right, now that we've talked about the Sweetheart Hoya's characteristics, let's move into plant care. On growing your sweetheart Hoya as a houseplant, let's first talk about lighting. She's gonna want high but indirect light, meaning she's gonna to wanna to be near a, a, a window where she can get filtered light from an overhang, or if you have a, a part of your home that just gets as a shade tree outside, that's gonna be great. You don't want to make have her get direct sunlight because that can burn her leaves. And she wants between 500 and 1,000 foot candles or even more if possible, but you just wanna make sure you don't give her direct sunlight because that could be a problem for her leaves, even though they're, they're thick and fleshy, which are so cute, you do want to be, you do want to make sure you, you don't, you don't get her too close where she gets some direct sunlight. She can catch the evening sunset, you know, and that's, that's cool. She will, that won't harm her leaves, but we, we have ours further away from our window. That's why we have the grow lights to help stimulate her growth and, and kick in these peduncles so she'll start flowering for us. But, but that's an important thing is you don't, you can grow these in, in medium light below 500 foot candles, but she's just gonna try to, she's just gonna more or less just sit there and, and hang out and not put out that much growth. So if you wanna encourage yours to grow more, more light the better, just not direct sunlight. Now for watering, she wants to be watered every seven to 10 days. Being an epiphyte, she wants to drain well. So you wanna make sure in your growing medium, and we'll go into soil uh, right now, you wanna make sure it's well drained but water every seven to 10 days. But, but before you water, check with your finger or use bamboo skewer, go down a few inches, and if it's still moist, 
hold off on the water because being an epiphyte in a tropical region, she wants some moisture, but she doesn't want water just to sit in there and get soggy around her roots. So on soil, we prefer a custom mix in this ratio so that so it allows for her roots to get that airflow she needs and not, not get too dense. And it's a 40% potting mix. We like Miracle Grow, Grow for that brand. And then we want to mix that with 20% of Better Grow Orchid Bark Mix. And that has some, uh, some charcoal and real chunky perlite. So we have 40% of uh, potting mix, 20% of the orchid bark, that gets you to 60%. Then we want you to add 20% worm castings, mix that all together, and now you're at 80%, and the other 20% we want more perlite. So just a standard perlite you get that's a little bit finer grain. Mix that all together, and you're gonna get this really rich, well-drained medium, and the worm castings are gonna give the nutrients that this tropical succulent will love to really start taking off in your home. Ours is needs to be repotted, and we'll probably be doing a video down the road on that. So you, you can allow them to stay in, when you're growing them in soil, because we have grown, grown our hoyas, <laughs> we have grown our hoyas both in soil and in Lekka. And this, this cutie pie back here is this Curtisii, sorry, the Curtisii hoya is a baby from mommy here, and she's grown in Lekka. And these, these are quick growers. They're, you know, like I mentioned earlier, they're different, different speeds for these hoyas, and we love our hoyas. The Abovada, the same thing. They, you can grow them in soil or in Lekka. And we haven't, we haven't grown our sweetheart hoya in Lekka yet. So uh, because it's just so so slow growing, I'm not sure if being in the Lekka would would uh, be something that they, they like. But I, we may try to see to see how well they do because we found other hoyas have done well growing in Lekka. So so for that soil mix, just make sure you mix that up real well, and then, and and then when you're repotting, don't put it in too, don't put her in too big of a pot. Just put her in a pot a little bit wider than where she's growing, in so that she can she can uh, grow into that and not have have too much of that medium around her. They, they don't mind being a little pot bound, we have found. And other folks say that these tend to grow fast and speaking back about characteristics, we haven't found that ours tend to grow a little bit slower than, than our other Hoyas because these guys are just bananas. Now, we've talked about that and we've talked about watering, let's talk about fertilizer. You can use a well-balanced fertilizer for her and put in, in, the, in, in a 20-20-20 throughout the, the summer months. But we also, in a second, we're going to move into detailed written instructions and we'll be giving you more information on the liquid fertilizer. Because you can you can add some of that, a, a different ratio to help get her peduncles to kind of generate some more energy to start blooming. And we'll, like I said, we're going to have written care instructions after this where I summarize everything we talked about. And then you can, you can look through that and do a screenshot if you'd like and hold that for your for your plant care needs. But on fertilizer, by and large, through April through September, we like putting in a 20-20-20 in our watering, and she loves it. Now, for pests, one thing I've mentioned about Hoyas, and definitely we get, we get, we get mealybugs on our Crimson Queen. And we have one, two, three, I don't know how many we've had, we've propagated so many. That's kind of a robust grow. Oh, we actually have one right here. We can root it again. So the Crimson Queen, the Crimson Princess, they tend to get mealybugs. So Hoyas in general do get mealybugs, more so than spider mites, but mealybugs, and they can be tenacious. So you have to, you have to be uh, on the lookout for them and they'll tend to, they'll tend to form in these little nodes here. And, and if you get a, and, and, and in the plant care section uh, where we go into written instructions, we'll give you some, some, some tips on how to, how to control that if you get them. But mealybugs will tend to form in the nodes and then you'll just start seeing them on the leaves themselves. And, the, and you would think that the plant, because she has these thick waxy leaves, that they wouldn't be able to drill in and, and suck the juices, but the mealybugs do somehow. And they're such a pain in the butt, but we, ours hasn't had any, uh, but our, our, our Crimson Queen definitely has had several bouts of it, but we've, we've since got it under control and haven't had any issues for, oh wow, well over a year or so now. But I think one other thing, one little tip to mention is that when you're getting new plants and bringing them in your home, it may be good just to spray them down with Nemo because sometimes the new plant friend that you bring to, to your home may have a pest on it, a mealybug or a two, and maybe it's not really hurting that plant because that plant has built up some natural defenses, but then that plant, that mealybug can migrate over and get to a Hoya, and then you, you start having to deal with those issues. So uh, let's talk about uh, humidity and temperature now to wrap things up. She's gonna want, she's gonna want Typical home humidity of 40 to 50%, she's gonna do fine. And in temperature from 60 to 80 degrees, 
no issue. She can she can even you can go a little bit lower or higher, and she's not going to have you're not going to have any ill effects. You just don't want to have her going below 50 for too long. This is a tropical succulent again, so you want to have you want to have her a little bit uh, higher in the temperature range. So now that we talked about all of that, let's move on to the detailed written instructions, and then we'll come back and do a quick summary at the end. We want to thank you for joining us today. If you have any thoughts or questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure I get back to you. Until the next video, bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family, we post videos weekly. Thanks. Ready to take her growth characteristics and some of her ah, it shops around uh, the holiday. Let me see my, oh my God, Valentine's Day. Thank you.